Hi, I'm Will. I'm Norm. Norm, Windows 8 release preview, the Ocho. We, we have, have it. it. We have it on a laptop right Here. now. Yeah. Uh, it's not out for the public, but it will be out soon at an unspecified date. Uh, but yes. let's show you what's different between the release preview and the consumer preview that we had a few months ago. Wow, nothing sounds more exciting than that. Let's go. The first thing you'll notice when you hop into the Windows 8 release preview, which is coming out early next month, so theoretically, we don't know for sure, is that Metro is still here. It's still very present. It looks very similar to both the developer build and the release preview. Yes, there are a ton of new apps installed by default, uh, but Microsoft spent a lot of the time in the intervening months working on mouse and keyboard controls, which makes sense because way more people are gonna use this OS on mice and keyboard devices and trackpads than they do on touch devices. Yeah, so for the start screen, uh, the same stuff that was in the consumer preview is here. So for example, right now, this is how you switch between your different Metro apps. You can go navigate to the top left or bottom left-hand side of the screen, and you see a preview of all the different applications you've had you running. You can jump straight in mm -hmm. uh, to, from app to app. We'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, let's go back to the desktop. Uh, one of the other things is that they've added gestures to the trackpads. So uh, for designed for Windows 8 trackpads, which we'll talk about more on the site later, uh, you can do things like swipe in from the edge to bring out the charms menu, which allows you to share and, and uh, do settings and stuff like that. Uh, if you want to right click, then you can bring up the context sensitive menu that's the equivalent of the, of the, of the right click on a traditional Windows desktop. And then if you swipe in from the left, as you would do on a tablet, that will just swipe and change you between the different Metro apps you have open. And of course, if you're in the start screen, you can pinch out for semantic zoom. Or in any app that supports like the Photos app or something yeah. like that. So basically, the trackpad for Windows 8 laptops is going to be comparable to a touch screen on a tablet. So we mentioned apps. There are a ton of new apps installed by default with Windows 8 release preview that weren't in the developer preview or the consumer preview, or they've been dramatically improved like mail. So when you open up mail, you, you'll see instantly that Windows 8 start Metro apps are kind of optimized for 16 by nine tablet used in the landscape position. Microsoft says in all their testing, people tend to use tablets in landscape. So we're on a laptop right now, but you can see that on the left side, your inbox um, panel and your mail messages are all accessible theoretically, but with your thumb, if you're holding the screen like it was a tablet. Yeah, if we imagine that this is a touch device, then you can grab it with both hands here. And the idea is that everything that you need to touch stays within thumb distance, mm -hmm. and this dead zone in the middle where there's no thumb access, is, is there's nothing really to do. Right, um, and that's why on the right side, you can swipe in from the side and bring up your charms. Exactly. So if you want to multitask on a tablet, which is something that you really can't do on iOS or Android today, all you need to do is drag it down Go up here to the multitask menu and then drag whatever you want into the appropriate space and then you can resize it as, as you see fit. So each app, like the mail app over here on the right, has a specific view that's designed to work in the small narrow pixel, uh, narrow width, which is I think 320 pixels wide, uh, or you can switch back and forth. So calendar can go over here, I can see my, my task list here, or I can go over to this one, probably shouldn't have put that uh, call up there with the phone number, but that's okay. Um, so uh, you mentioned it's 320 pixels wide, which is very specific, and this actually works on your full desktop as well. So if you can have a desktop as your full view with a 320 pixel wide sidebar using a Metro app uh, on the side using mail, maps, or whatever Metro app you want to display, music or anything, uh, what Microsoft is actually requiring is that every Metro app have some kind of robust thin 320 pixel wide sidebar view for multitasking. And I don't know if we'll be using this on the desktop or on laptops, but on tablets, it is much more multitasking than you would normally get on an iOS or an Android tablet. I can kind of see you using it on a, desk on, on a desktop uh, for things like IM Windows and stuff like that. So I kind of already do that anyway. I dock my Digsby client over on the far right side and, and then it's just there when I need to access it. Yeah. Uh, so other apps that have remained, you know, Calendar Mail have been around for a long time. Photos app is more or less the same as it was. Uh, news has been redesigned fairly significantly. So you can see it's a kind of Flipboard style uh, interface. It's all powered by Bing's news uh, functionality. And you can tap to get into what I think is a pretty easy to read kind of four column HTML5 layout. Uh, the neat thing about the news that they showed us this morning is actually this. Let's uh, get my task window. So you can do my news based on keyword searches that's tied to Bing uh, specifically. So I like Corgis and I like Lego. So I have customized news that is about Corgis and Lego and you can drill down 
all the way into a specific to- topic and get hard hitting stories like this one from CBS News about corgis being members of the royal family. And this is a good example because while the news app, Metro app, is an aggregator of sorts using Bing, it doesn't automatically render all the news stories you're gonna read within that nice readability style uh, pane. Uh, For sites like CBS here, you're gonna load just basically a website. And so it's just an aggregator, but it's using Bing's search engine to find trends and to dig into search basically. So if you have a bookmark for Lego or Corgi, you can actually pin that to your start screen, and now you'll, you'll get all the news story updates that Bing finds uh, with those keywords. So the value, of course, is gonna change based on what you search for. As you can see, I search for Lego. There's a fair amount of repetition in Lego. We have the Adafruit stuff here. Um, so, I mean, it's not, it's not perfect, but it's a kind of neat feature. I, I, I don't see myself using this in the long term, but who knows, maybe. Uh, they've also re- revamped the sports app. Uh, you can drill down into specific uh, sports, whichever you prefer. So uh, it's, it's not feature complete at this point, but if I want to find out about the Giants, I can go to MLB in theory. Here we go. Uh, and then you can go over here. And one of the neat things about Bing is that they are context aware. So they'll pull out things like schedules and box scores for different teams. And you can even go into uh, see specific things about teams that you prefer. So I'm a Giants fan. It's been a rough year. It's not that bad, but we've had better, we've had worse. I've pinned the Giants to the home screen. So you can see what that means is over here on the right, uh, someplace. Right above. There it is. No, that's sports. To the right. Right there. There we go. So as you can see here on the home screen, I have a Giants tab that has takes me directly to the Giants deep link in the sports app. And I can see things like upcoming schedule and batting leaders and stats and all that kind of stuff if I'm really much more into baseball than I am in, in practicality. And so this is a theme that Microsoft really, really wants to emphasize with Windows 8, is that they want you to pin things within different Metro apps to your start screen so that the start screen becomes full of these shortcuts that are all active and they're, they're all updated in real time. We haven't had a whole lot of time with this build yet, but one of the things I'm already kind of questioning is the new right-click context menu. So in, on previous versions of Windows, when you right-click, you get a pop-up window that comes up right beside the cursor. You go to the frequently used f- functions there. On Windows 8, when you right-click in a Metro app, it brings up this, this, the context-aware menu at the bottom of the screen. So you're already kind of having to move the cursor more than you have in the past, which I think is a little bit weird. I, I don't know how I feel Not only that. is that weird, but it's also different from the context-aware menu for like settings, for example, which you have access to charms. So if you are in, uh, for example, IE, Internet Explorer, and you start, you right-click in, 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 on a web page, you do get your top-down pop-up for, your, uh, for some right-click options. Right? But then if you want to get into IE's settings, you have to go pull up the charms from the side, the right side of the screen, and then th- that's where your settings are. Actually. I, don't, I don't know how to get the charm. Oh, wait, there, there, there you charms. go. And so, there go your IE settings. So this is another example of the keyboard uh, shortcuts and mouse shortcuts being added that are a little bit different. If you want to bring the, if you want to get up the charms menu, you bring the cursor to the bottom right or the top right, and then drag it down uh, when you see the little highlights pop out. It's, it's a little bit weird. I don't know how it's... It's different. I don't know that this is bad or good. Uh, we're gonna have to spend a lot more time using it before we can really make any kind of value judgments. But you can get into internet options and all that sort of thing, uh, just as you could in the developer preview and the consumer preview. One thing to also note with Internet Explorer is that Flash is actually built in. And Microsoft had said before that you know when IE for Metro would be completely plug-in free. Uh, but what they wanted to say was that they actually built Flash, not as a plug-in, but directly as a part of the uh, the browser. So Flash actually plays natively. Uh, there's a selection of websites that run Flash that gets approved. They actually whitelist thousands and thousands of websites to, mm-hmm. to use Flash. And unlike Flash implementation on other tablets or uh, other OSs, um, it actually is built right into the browser. It'll get updated with Windows Update and it'll work with certain games. It won't work with certain rollovers for touch. Uh, and so it's very selective Flash. It's just like, it's a very similar to the Chrome implementation of Flash. It seems like. So then the last thing we want to talk about uh, is, of course, the desktop. And the desktop is where you and me, we're going to spend most of our time in Windows and the desktop. And we were afraid, you know, with the start screen, does that mean desktop is less relevant? Well, no, the desktop is exactly the same uh, as well, before. Well, kind of. 
I mean, yeah, well, is, there's no start button still, which I seems a little bit crazy to me. And um, they got rid of that the the start uh, screen button actually. And so if you actually just move the mouse down to the bottom left hand corner, you can access the start screen. It's a little bit uh, less sensitive, or more, it's a little bit less sensitive to movement than it was before. It's still easy to move away from there, uh, but you can still hit the button that's on the far left, which was a little bit difficult in the consumer preview. Mm -hmm. And uh, something I'm actually uh, really happy about is that now if you go to the bottom left hand corner and right click, you get your quick access to all the basic Ooh. things that you would previously want to access with the start menu. Uh, so for example, quick access to control panel, your taskbar, your device manager, all right there. It's a lot of the stuff that you would get from the start menu before, yes. Yes, and now that is there. It's a little hidden. I think they're saying it's for power users, but I really am happy that that is still there in the bottom left hand corner. Uh, Arrow is gone. They're, they're calling it a different this type isn't, of interface. This now. looks like Arrow to me, Norm. It looks a lot it's like Arrow. It's translucent. There's Windows Chrome. I, I think Arrow is gone. What it looks like is they squared the corners. Yeah. I, I thought that there weren't any square corners in nature. That's what I learned from reading Steve Jobs' biography. Well, I think it looks fine on the desktop here. Um, you can customize your desktop just as you could before. Uh, they've said they've made some multi-monitor improvements, but we're gonna have to test that with multi-monitors on a real desktop. And of course, because desktop runs while the start screen runs in the background, while Metro apps run in the background, you can actually run both Metro apps and desktop apps at the same time. So for example, the one third 320 pixel pane view pops up right now and you can still snap like your web browser on your desktop uh, to the left and right and you basically get as, as many snaps as you want. So for example, uh, that web so browser you have. I can put my web browser over on the right like this. I can yep. put my other web browser up, web browser on the left like this. Exactly. That is really cool. Uh, one other thing that we noticed is that by default the ribbon isn't uh, visible in Explorer and some of the other places that we'd seen it in previous versions. So you can blow it out if you really love the ribbon. Look, there's a the ribbon. But by default, it doesn't show at all, and this looks pretty much exactly like the, like if I put this in front of my mom, she would not detect the difference between this Explorer and Windows 7 Explorer and probably Windows 98 Explorer. Um, so the differences in the desktop really isn't in terms of functionality, but in terms of how you access certain things. For example, if you are accustomed to opening programs by hitting the Windows key and then typing in a program name, that's, well, that's still the way normal. That's the way you should open yeah, applications. Yeah, exactly. It, that still works, except now it pops over to the start screen first. That's how you browse through the programs, and then it goes back to your desktop. And, and for what it's worth, they swear that the mode switch from, the, from here to the start menu and back takes no more time than pressing the start button and typing notepad on Windows 7. I think we should set up a camera and test that directly. Yeah, you know, even if it's no, no slower or even no, no faster, I think that the visual change itself is a little jarring and that's what's gonna take most people a lot of time to get used to. And of course, once you're back in the start screen, getting in the desktop requires, you know, hitting a shortcut key. I think it's, what is it, Windows, Windows B? Uh, Windows D is desktop. Windows, Windows, Windows B. Windows B is... There you go. Windows D is desktop too, though. Look, oh, or or Windows D, um, or hitting the actual desktop button uh, on the sh in the start screen. That just switch back, switches back and forth between the two previously open programs. So if you're switching between the start screen and the desktop, then then you're good to go. Um, I, I'm again, this is something that's a really significant change. So we're going to spend a lot more time with it over the coming weeks and. We'll have more uh, on how we feel about this change later. Uh, and of course, this is not final hardware, not final software, uh, and just a taste of uh, what might be coming at the end of this year. So that is the Windows 8 release preview. Yep, there's obviously a lot more work to do on Microsoft side, uh, both in the hardware and the software side. So this is not final by any means. You're going to spend more time with it. I'm going to take it home right now and spend the next 24 hours studying and writing about this. Uh, we will have something on the site around noon tomorrow or today. Uh, and of course, we'll talk about it on this is only a test in the afternoon. So check that out as well in more detail. Uh, for testing, I'm Will. I'm Norm. See you guys later. Bye.